The good man of Wasnus. The good man of Wasnus was a handsome, well-to-do young fellow, strong and well-liked with a profitable farm. It will come as no surprise to learn that many of the unmarried local girls had their sights on him. However, despite their ample attentions, the good man was a man who was simply not interested in marriage. Their advances spurned, the local girls soon began to treat the good man with contempt. Describing him as an old young man, and old before his time, in their eyes he was committing the unpardonable sin of celibacy. The good man, however, paid these malicious creatures little heed, and, as is more often the case, the gossips soon turned their attentions elsewhere. When questioned by his friends as to the reason he would not take himself a wife, the good man would smile and simply explain, Women are like many other things in this weary world, only sent as a trial to men, and I have enough trials without being tried by a wife. If that fool Adam had not been bewitched by his wife, he might still be in the Garden of Eden to this day. One old woman, who heard this oft-repeated speech, remarked, Heed well what you say, you will maybe be bewitched yourself one day. That will be when you walk from the old Zassini to the Bora Papa, Orkney place names, without wetting your feet. So it came to pass that one fine day the good man was down on the ebb when he saw, a short distance away, a number of selkie folk lying out on a flat rock. Some of these selkie folk were sunning themselves in the afternoon warmth, while others jumped and played in the clear water. All were naked, with unblemished skins, as white as snow. Their enchanted seal skins lay strewn carelessly on the sand and rocks around them. The goodman crept closer to their basking rock. As he neared the place where the selkie folk played, the goodman leapt to his feet and ran towards them for all he was worth. With a shriek, the selkie folk snatched up their seal skins and quickly retreated into the safety of the sea. However, swift as they were, the good man was quicker, and he managed to seize a skin belonging to one beautiful seal maiden. In the hasty rush to safety, this poor creature had forgotten to retrieve her skin. The selkie folk swam out a little distance and turned to gaze mournfully at the goodman. He stared back and realised that all, save one, had taken the shape of seals. Grinning, he put the captured seal skin under his arm, and whistling a merry tune, he set out for home. No sooner had he left the ebb than he heard the most sorrowful wailing and weeping coming from behind him. Turning, he saw a fair woman following him. She was the most pitiful sight, sobbing and howling in grief. She held her arms out and pled to have her skin returned. Huge tears ran from her large, dark eyes and trickled down her ivory cheeks. Falling to her knees, she cried, O oh, handsome man, if there is any mercy in your human breast, give me back my seal-skin. I cannot live without it. I cannot live among my own people without my seal-skin. The good man was not a soft-hearted man but he could not help but pity the poor creature. Pity, however, was not the only emotion he felt. With pity came the softer and sweeter passion of love. The icy heart that had yet to love a mortal woman was soon melted by this seal-maiden's beauty. Eventually, the good man managed to wring from the selkie wife a reluctant consent to remain with him as his wife. She had little choice in the matter, for as you all Orcadian know, she could not return to her kin in the sea without her skin. So the sea maiden went with the good man and stayed with him for many a day. She turned out to be a thrifty, frugal, and kindly wife, and although she was a creature of the sea, the good man had a happy life with her. The selkie wife bore the goodman seven children. Four boys and three girls came from their union, and it was said there were no children as beautiful as them in all the isles. And after all the while, the sea wife and her human husband seemed content and merry. But all was not as it seemed. There was a weight in the selkie wife's heart. Many was the time that she was seen, 
to gaze longingly out to sea, the sea that was her true home. So to all the islanders and to the goodman himself all seemed well with his family. But as is always the case in these tales, the bliss was not to last. One fine day, the goodman and his four sons were out fishing in their boat. With the men folk out of the house, the selkie wife sent the three girls down to the ebb to gather limpets and whelks for their tea. The youngest girl had to remain at home, because she had hurt her foot, climbing on the sharp rocks by the shore. As usual, as soon as the house emptied, the selkie wife set to looking for her long-lost sealskin. She searched high and low. She searched butt and she searched ben. She searched out and she searched in, but to no avail. She could not find the skin. The time passed and the sun swung to the west, lengthening the shadows. The peedy lass, seated in a straw-backed chair with her sore feet on the creepy, watched her mother carry out the frantic hunt. Mother, what are you looking for? Oh, child, don't tell, but I'm looking for a pretty skin, to make a shoe that would cure your sore feet. But, ma'am, I know where it is. One day, when you were out, and my father thought I was asleep in bed, he took a pretty skin down, glowered at it for a short time, then folded it, and put it away in the asins over the bed. When the sulky wife heard this, she clapped for joy, and rushed to the place where her long concealed skin lay. Fare thee well, Peedy Buddo, she said to her child as she ran from the house. Rushing to the shore, she threw on her skin, and with a wild cry of joy, plunged into the sea. Shifting again into her selkie form, she swam out through the waves, where a selkie man was waiting for her, and greeted her with delight. All the while the goodman was rowing home, and happened to see these two selkies from his boat. His wife uncovered her beautiful face and cried out to him, Fare thee well, good man of Wasness. Farewell to thee. I liked thee well enough, for thou was good to me, but I love better my husband from the sea. That was the last the goodman ever saw of his sea wife. Often, though, in the twilight of his years, he could be seen wandering on the empty seashore, hoping once again to meet his lost love. But never again did he look upon her fair face. 